Wiring is complicated, isn't it? Well, it can be of course, but perhaps it's not as daunting as first thought if it's taken one step at a time. The wiring for each circuit on the original layout was just about as basic as you can get. A combined transformer and controller wired directly to the track. For the purposes of this layout, we will need more outputs and therefore a separate transformer and controller. The inner circuit of the new layout is going to be divided into three separate electrical sections, each of which needs to be able to be switched on or off. In this example there are two wires going into each section switch and two exiting to the track four in all for each section. Each section of track is separated electrically on both rails from its neighbour by using nylon insulating track joiners. On a large layout this could mean a lot of wiring which could take time and a large amount of wire. It could be complex to sort out should anything go wrong and most importantly as far as I'm concerned it involves a lot of soldering. In a previous episode I have mentioned that soldering is something I have never really mastered, so the less of it I have to do, the better. This can be simplified a little by using what is known as common return wiring. At its simplest it means that one rail round the whole layout is permanently connected to a controller, whilst the other rail can be turned on and off using section switches. Now there is only one wire into each section switch and one out to the track. It is always important to decide right from the start which rail is to be the common return rail and always stick to it. Insulating rail joiners can be inserted between track sections in the common return rail or metal joiners can be used but if there's a fault in a section a metal joiner may hide the location whereas a nylon one won't. You can of course just use one common return wire for the whole layout and rely on the fish plates for electrical connectivity but in my opinion a soldered joint is more reliable. So that's my version of it at its simplest level. There are other ways but this has always stood me in good stead in the past. An accessory I like to add is a high frequency track cleaner as I believe it helps current flow to locomotives if the track surface gets a little dirty. This device needs its own independent AC power supply which is supplied directly from terminals on the transformer. It can then be inserted in the electronic circuit between the controller and the track section switches. It's worth repeating at this point that this diagram only covers the inner circuit of the layout. There will need to be a similar one for the outer circuit. Even on a small layout such as this, as more and more wiring is added, it will get more and more complex, so colour coding becomes essential. Once installed, most of the wiring will be beneath the baseboard where it's not so easy to get at and so easy identification is essential. Layout wire can be purchased in a variety of colours, enough to be able to decide on a different colour for each purpose. So far I have decided to use red for the common return and blue for the section wiring. I have drawn a location plan to show the routes the wiring will take. I have found this invaluable when deciding what should go where and also when adding wires to the layout. The wires from the transformer first have to be routed to the socket on the control panel and the return wires from the socket back to the HF track cleaner in the centre of the baseboard. Output wires from the HF track cleaner then have to be routed back to the tag strips at the front of the board. From there common return wires go to the track section and the other section wires to the section switches. Finally the track section wires are fed to the track sections. This all sounds a bit convoluted and it probably is, but most of the wires are either on the control panel or just behind it so are easily get-atable.
Looking at the layout itself, space considerations have dictated that the transformers, CDU and HF track cleaner should all be located in the centre of the layout. Note that there are already two transformers in place on the layout. One of these will also power the capacitor discharge unit for the point motors, but this will be the subject of a future episode. Softboard does not take screws very well and as transformers are quite heavy objects, a piece of ply has been glued to the board to house all the electrical equipment. As the HF track cleaner is very light, it has been attached using sticky fixer pads. The CDU is in what may be its final place, but it's not been permanently fixed yet as this will be done when the point motors are fixed and wired up. The tag strips are located just behind the control panel and the controller socket and point and section switches obviously on the control panel itself. The split in the wire on the tag strip at the bottom of the picture is not my bad soldering but is in fact deliberate. The three left hand wires are for the inner circuit whilst the right hand will be for the outer separately controlled circuit once it is wired up. Now I'm off to purchase more red and blue wire to wire up the outer circuit. It could be a while before I get round to the next episode, but that will look at wiring up point motors. See you then.